Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Roger Shah about the Sun Lounger classic Lost. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is, the story behind Lost by Sun Lounger, my interview with Roger Shah. Enjoy. Roger Shah is a German DJ and producer who is responsible for a massive amount of releases under lots of different project names. In my previous interview with Roger, we already spoke about the Sun Lounger debut track White Sand. But for this interview, I sat down with Roger to ask him about the story behind Lost, another track that came out under the name Sun Lounger. For this one Roger worked together with Canadian singer-songwriter Zara Taylor. Lost became a big success and in December 2008 it even became Tune of the Year in Armin van Buren's radio show A State of Trance. My first question to Roger was if there was anything that did inspire him when he started to work on Lost. Um, actually I just started to work on a new track in the studio not thinking about too much, I'm not even thinking that it might be a huge record. Um, whenever I work on music, I work on a musical ID first. Um, usually breakdown, top line melody, whatever, and then I feel which direction would it take me. So I wanted to go, I knew that I wanted to use it for my Sun Lounger project. So I, I started on slow BPM, like around 128, 130, um, and wanted to do it more like a progressive type of feel to it, not too euphoric, so more like cool. And once I worked on the music, then I was thinking about who could be the singer. And I already had a track uh, with, with Sara, like Crawling was one of the tracks I had with her. And I felt that could be a great feel to the way she is, is writing her songs. And I sent her the instrumental and then I went a bit back and forth with her about the ideas. And then she came back uh, with that song. And then I played, I had to change a few things arrangement wise, but that's pretty much it. And I just enjoyed working on the track. and. You know, when you work on music, you never know what's happening yeah. after. It's not like, okay, now I you work on this huge hit or mm -hmm. you, you, can, you cannot plan no, it. You can cool. never plan it. Or if people tell me, why would you not do another track like Lost? I mean, and I always say, look, if, don't you think I tried it every time? I do mm -hmm. a new track to make yeah. another hit like Lost, but that's happening. Yeah. It's also about the right time, the right track, the right guys playing it, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, the right feel. You yeah, know. For, for me personally, I feel, uh, I have so many other tracks. I. I, I feel they have the same potential, yeah. you know, so, but that one made it tune of the year. So, yeah, um, yeah so that's, that's the thing. It's not a, something really special about it. It's no. just, it became special after, yeah, yeah. you know. So yeah, you already said like Zara, you did a track with her called Crawling. So yeah, that, that's, we, when, that's when you met her? Yeah, yeah. So, so we, we worked on Crawling on a few other tracks in the meanwhile. So yeah, so it's really, yeah. this is how I met her. Yeah, but did, did you meet like in person or was it? We met in person as well. Um, she was also with me uh, as a live singer on a few shows, but it was already, was after, yeah. af after we had released Lost. So I think, I'm not sure if I met her in person before we did Lost or it, if that was after, I'm not sure anymore. Because yeah. I've worked with so many people yeah. since so many years. <laughs> I, I can imagine sometimes you forget stuff. Yeah, seriously, yeah. especially having a catalog of over a thousand tracks yeah. made. So, oh wow, that's, yeah. that's very impressive. Yeah. So yeah, Lost, how long did it take you to, to finish like everything? Uh, I would say I worked, uh, usually I'm pretty fast when I have an idea. Um, I think I worked one day on the track, waiting for the vocals, then fine tuning some stuff. Uh, I would say three days, yeah. maybe. Yeah. So do you remember who was the first person to hear the track when, it's completely fi when it was completely finished? Uh, I think the, when I finished it, I sent it right away to Armin um, and, and to Amara and yeah, I mean, I think they, they loved it right away. Uh, it was a great time at that time and I had really like every track I release, I think we just had a time of one after another. I mean, when you think about 2008, I had Back to You as a follow-up single of Who Will Find Me, which was already a massive yeah. anthem. There yeah. was a massive anthem. It's still, when I play all those tracks, people still, I actually heard Back To You twice at Lumi. Mm -hmm. So that was, was interesting too, that some people playing Back To You. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, actually, I should play that maybe again too, make yeah. it a new version. Yeah. And yeah, when you think about 2008, we had Back To You, I had Going Wrong with Armin. Oh, yeah. 
that was massive, massive. really massive sing along. That was even like like a top five hit record yeah. in Holland. Yeah. And then I had lost on top of that as a tune of the year. So that was just all in one year. Yeah. So that was really a massive, massive time. So yeah, I think it's safe to say that 2008 was a pretty good year for you. That was really good. Yeah, this is also when everything started for me to become bigger and international touring, more booking requests from yeah. bigger shows, bigger festivals. Um, I got into DJ Mag, which was really relevant at that time. Mm -hmm. It was my first entry on 58. Um, so yeah, so I really look back with a lot of amazing memories from yeah. that time. So do you remember when you heard and found out that, that it was like the tune of the year? Uh, I remember um, because just in that week before the announcements, um, Amada told me to be on standby for interview and stuff um, because there's a high chance that I might have won the tune of the year. Mm -hmm. And I was always thinking tune of the year, of course, is going wrong. That's what I was expecting. Oh. <laughs> because that was such, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. just by radio and by, by everything, that was the biggest record out there. Yeah. And I knew that Lost was really popular and Armin was playing it everywhere. And, but in my mindset, I felt like, okay, I think of course going wrong is the tune of the year yeah. because it's such a big sing-along anthem. Like even in, at that time you had not so many airplay in radio with a trance record, but that one made yeah. it. Um, so that's why I was, was thinking. And then when I saw the results that and then I saw uh, going wrong was I think top 10 or number 11 or something. I'm like, huh, that's kind of weird. So, and then, yeah, when it found out and they revealed that lost this tune of the year, I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, you did not expect that. No, not at all, yeah. not at all. I knew it was a big one and a special one. I mean, uh, you can, you see a lot when you release a track, there's a lot of feedback from people and you've always feel there's something special about the track and people not just telling you, yeah, like, this is amazing, whatever. And people really tell you what, that track means to them or the way it helps them to go through a hard time or something, mm -hmm. this is when you know you created something really special, something which yeah. really talks straight to people's hearts. Yeah. I think this is a big difference. Yeah, and that's something like, you know, when you're in a studio, yeah, you have like no clue and you no. think like, I mean, you might think like, oh, this is a cool track, yeah. but yeah, then it comes yeah. out and then it's like. Pfft. Exactly, I mean, when I work in the studio on music, I'm very selfish. I really, if to say those words, I don't give a shit about any opinion. Mm -hmm. The only opinion counts for me is, do I love it? Can I not wait to finally play it on stage? How would I perform it live? Because usually for a fact, I'm a live performer with the keyboard. Mm -hmm. uh, but on every track, I already have this vision in my head. How could be the crowd response at that certain melody or the drop or whatever? Mm -hmm. This is always my point of view. Yeah. Um, I never really listen to any other records. I don't care if anyone else would play it. Of course, I appreciate it when I get the support from my mates and from the DJs from the industry. But at the end of the day, I make the music for myself. I need to love it and I always tell people when I talk to an aspiring artist, you have to, at first you have to make music for yourself, you have to like it, you have yeah. to love it. If yeah. you feel that way, there's other people feel the same way. Yeah. But if you already make work on music and you feel like, ah, not sure, not sure. there's so many are insecure, yeah. right? Like, like, ah, how would other people feel about it? Yeah. You know, so, so, and this is always what I try to tell also people, say, hey, make the music for yourself first, be yeah. happy, be proud, and then share it. Yeah, I think that's a very good advice. Yeah. 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 Did, did you also tell that to your son? Actually, there was no need so far yeah. because I feel he's really confident and has a vision what he wants to do. Yeah. It was just nice for me to see him being backstage and being so confident, chatting with everyone. Yeah, yeah. I felt he might be shy asking for a photo because he was asking me, hey, is it, is it kind of weird if I ask Fadi for a picture because you work together? He said, no, that's fine. Yeah. Other guys, you, you look up to him, you like his music, even it's trance, yeah. he does melodic techno. Um, sure, that's, there's nothing wrong about it. Yeah. But then seeing, seeing him for the second day, being high five with everyone, <laughs> then I think I had to chat with another artist. I feel like, oh, let me check where Noah is. Maybe he's bored and I say, oh no, he's fine. He's just talking with Rich Solar Stone, so he's fine. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so yeah. he was really, he, had his, his, he said it was one of his best weekends of his life yeah. so far. Yeah. So next time he wants to join you again. <laughs> <laughs> I think so for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Maybe hoping there's a missing artist yeah, for the yeah, first hour, exactly. right? Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, the, the fact that it became, like that loss became a tune of the year, is that also the highlight of the, the, the track for you? Uh, I don't, I mean, it's, it's the highlight for me is for sure that, that it, it got a title, that it's a tune of the year. But the highlight for me is about um, that it, it made people vote for their favorite. And yeah. I still see it 
that it's a big record whenever I play it. I think there's no way if I would play any show still after so many years, if I would not play Lost. Yeah, people would get angry. People would get angry in some country, maybe they would kill me. <laughs> you know? So, um, and this is when you see there's something really special about yeah. the track. It's not about if it's a tune of the year, no. because they have, have that feeling with so many other tracks mm -hmm. as well, which I just know I need to play these records because it means a lot to the people. When people write to you stories, for example, um, we've lost the one, one touching story, for example, is um, there was this one during the war of Iraq, uh, and this guy from the US texting me saying, hey, by the way, when, when we when we've been to war and, and every day we had to go out and, and fight for certain, um, I don't know exactly the wording, but he said, look, every time we left for appointment and had to do certain things, we always lost one of our mates. Mm -hmm. So we were really scared, kind of going out there, coming back and always losing one of our bodies, right? Yeah. So, and he said, that became our war anthem, actually. Oh, wow. Let your fears go and you find your way back home. Yeah, yeah it's a very that, good lyric. That was our line, yeah. which gave us strength. Yeah. And he told me he, he gonna see me in LA. And when I played this record, I saw him first row, like losing it. Oh, wow. So I went down, gave him a huge hug uh -huh. and, and you know, so those are the very special moments, yeah. which I think about that track. Yeah. Yeah. Not about if it's two of the years, amazing. Mm -hmm. But having those stories, which are really touching, you yeah, know, it's like super personal. Yeah, super personal. Yeah. Knowing that actually that track made people go through war. Yeah, that's something really special yeah, exactly. for me. Just on a personal level, thinking about that, that the track has that power mm -hmm. for some people. Yeah, you know, so that's really. Yeah. So yeah, Lost. Uh, it, it came out with remixes from Alien Fila uh, and Andrelli and Blue. Uh, later remixes from uh, Vintage and Morelli, Will Atkinson and Nils Hoffman uh, also did a remix. Yeah. You did a new version yourself in 2018. Yeah. Um, if you could pick whoever you wanted to remix Lost, who would that be then? Oh, I mean, there have been so many remixes already. Uh, if I could really pick any mm -hmm. one from any genre, mm -hmm. I would ask Hans Zimmer to make it an oh. orchestral version oh. and put it into a huge movie. Ooh, because yeah. that line would still work. Yeah, exactly. We just talked about it. Yeah. So that could be... A nice scene, let your fears go and you find your way back home yeah. for a war scene. People just, just what we just talked about and having him making yeah. a version, his version. Hey, never say never. Never say never. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So yeah, Lost, it, so it, it became one of your most successful tracks, but, but it never came out on vinyl. Why is that? And it never got a music video. Oh, really? No. That's, at that time, we had always a music video for every every track, mm -hmm. but for some reason, Amara decided... Oh, the, the budget went to going wrong, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe, yeah. Actually, that's a good question. At that time, I was always thinking about it, that, that that's the only track we never got a music video to make it more towards crossover hit yeah. record. I don't know. Um, I just think, especially at that time, and you know yourself, the music industry, yeah, it's so money. it's and it's so fast paced. Yeah. You have to decide it right now, right at that moment, like just the lifespan of a track. Now it's even worse than it was at that time. Um, so yeah, it's, I think at some point we just went to the next track, yeah. made, made the next big record. <laughs> yeah. You know, so um, yeah, but you already said like 2008 was you had like a lot of stuff. So yeah, that was, maybe maybe yeah. they were like, okay, we're, we're yeah. focusing on the going wrong or something. Yeah, especially at that time when we released that track. And when you release it, you don't know that it's ending up being that yeah. big record. Yeah. For me, it was more like a pro progressive track, uh, like a track from the forthcoming Sun Lounge album, which was, I think, Sunny Tales, um, like a teaser, and that's it. Yeah. You know, so, it's a, and then just later it, it became that big one. I think especially after becoming Tune of the Year, it became even bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, it's like same with Unbreakable, for example. Mm -hmm. Once you crowned like a Tune of the Year, which was my second one, yeah then it becomes really special for the people, yeah. more than it becomes for me. Yeah, then it gets more attention for the yeah. people that might have missed it when it originally yeah. came out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, after Lost, you did work uh, t uh, with Zara again for the track Found. Uh, and as, as far as I know, this was the last time you did work together with her? No, no, we worked on a few more tracks together, actually. It was Found, then we had the track called Feels Like Heaven. And then later, way later, I had a Roger Shah and Sarah track called Fire. It was, I think, in 2015, I think. I think that was, I think that was maybe the last time we worked. But then she 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 got she got pregnant, baby, um, more become mummy, 
Um, she's not working on so much music. I think when I'm working on some of the forthcoming stuff, I might approach her again, like doing like a nice uh, new track together. I think people will like that. For sure. I mean, I usually always would use her for the Sun Launcher stuff, but then with the last album with Sunset and Bonfires, I had the concept actually to create a live band. That's why I just used Inger Hansen and, and, and Susie Ledge for the vocals to yeah. be like three of us on stage. That was the plan when I produced that album, but then COVID happened. Oh, yeah. And now you already move ahead with other plans, yeah. right? So we, we wanted to make a little break doing a full Sun Launcher album, band, tour, and then move on with something else because three people traveling sometimes also a bit hard, also budget wise. Yeah. And we just wanted to name, make it like a one time thing. Mm -hmm. um, but then COVID happened, yeah. so there was a bit of a bad luck. That's, but for that reason, she wasn't on the last yeah. Sun Launch album, so I might go back to her. Or in the next album, I will invite more different people for more variety again. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's see. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, can, can you tell what inspires you when you write music? Uh, a lot of things inspiring me that can come from just a recent gig. If you are still in this high, you have this still high being on stage, feeling all the love of the people. That inspires me. Um, listening to other other sets inspires me. Having a good time or walking in nature, like a beautiful place, could be nice on the beach, could be in the forest, could be anywhere. Um, there's a lot of things inspiring me. Usually, whatever I experience in my life, I kind of absorb it and translate it through music. For example, I had a hard time when my mom passed away. Uh, in like it was 2018 when I did my No Boundaries album, but for some reason I ended up being so creative just processing, mm -hmm. and I ended up being in the studio composing melodies and crying at the same time. But it was my way dealing with it. Yeah. That's why I ended up making a two CD album because I had 30 tracks done mm -hmm. for that album, and I just every track is meaningful to me. Yeah. I want to release them all. That's why I decided to make a two CD album with 30 tracks, which is also a bit not usual, yeah. you know? So, so even those sad parts can really inspire me yeah. and I turn it around into something positive, yeah. kind of. So I always feel also music is a very healing source. Yeah. Like the way people write to me, actually your music helped me through mm -hmm. going through some hard times. Yeah. It helps me uh, channeling, focusing on music yeah. if I have to go through some rough times myself. But this is like, for example, uh, like, like Adele, you know, like her first albums, they were like about breakups and like bad ex-boyfriends and she wrote like beautiful albums. So yeah, yeah. It, I, I can imagine it, it yeah. helps. Yeah, for me it's a lot about, especially if, I, if I'm in a beautiful environment, mm -hmm. nature, as I said, I'm very, I feel very connected to the nature. Yeah. That's why I have this project now calling, called uh, Tribute to Earth. Um, this is really stuff I really appreciate. And, and, and even like a simple beautiful bee on a flower, mm -hmm. for example. In the other interview, we just, I was wearing this yellow shirt. Uh -huh. It's actually a picture I made myself in my backyard, which uh -huh. is a sunflower with a bee on it, if you really look, look it up. Uh -huh. okay. so, so those are these little things I really appreciate yeah. myself, yeah. and that's also inspiring for me. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So yeah, during the years you did work together with people such as Arme van Buren, Paul van Dijk, Tauger, uh, Adrina Torp, Signum, Judge Jules, Alien Villa, Susanna. Sean Evans from Cochine, Stoneface and Terminal, and the list goes on and on. Wow. Yeah, so with, with, like with, 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 I mean, I worked with a lot, even I remixed for Tiesto back in the days, and then I did my Global Experience project for exclusively like, yeah. for In Search of Sunrise on request. Um, I think I almost worked with every everybody I wanted. Uh, besides Hans Zimmer. <laughs> besides Hans. Um, yeah, never say never. Um, yeah, I think I'm really happy where I am at the moment. Yeah. With, with work with so many people, but also feel the love and respect within the industry. Yeah. That sometimes people call me up saying, actually, there's some some I could I could need your help uh, in the music uh, in the, from the studio mm -hmm. point of view. So that's that's still something nice. Um, yeah, I mean I worked with Paul Van Dyke on his Escape album during the lockdown. Mm -hmm. Worked on that album together, which was great. Um, so technically now I have all his biggest hit records, <laughs> vocal-wise, sitting on my desk. Uh -huh. So I could rework any, <laughs> just for my own mm -hmm. good sake. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was great experience as well. So yeah, I think there's not so many on, on the list. Yeah. So I'm just happy the way it worked so far. Yeah. And I'm always open with, for new collaborations mm -hmm. as well, because there's nothing better than the synergy of 
of working with a different music mind or just if someone has a cool idea, you would start working a bit different if I would just sit by myself. Even mm -hmm. sometimes you work just back and forth with the internet. Just by thinking I work or collab with someone else makes me think a bit different and maybe do things a bit different, which is kind of interesting starting point as well. Yeah. 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 So do you have any favorite producers yourself? Uh, I think I, when it comes to this, I don't really have a favorite favorite because there's so much music out there, so many artists, so many different genres. Um, as I said, I like a lot of the melodic techno guys, which is something because it's a different genre. It's more like I try to understand how they produce the music, mm -hmm. like Stefan Botzin, who keeps it very minimal, but makes the, the bass and the melody yeah. with the same instrument, kind of, which is kind of unique way which is something I'm trying to incorporate a bit in some of my uplifting tracks to make a fusion a bit of that. Stefan used to make trends, huh, right? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I mean, that's really interesting to see those guys making technically trends in mm -hmm. 125, mm -hmm. um, yeah, which is very similar, right? So, yeah. yeah, but I don't really have favorite producers. I think there's just so, so many good talent out there. I wouldn't even not know where to start, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, okay, this is also probably going to be a difficult question. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? In 10 years, I hope I would still see myself on a stage, but then I would turn 60. I'm already older as I look like. Yeah, you, have, yeah, you look young, so that's good. I, I still look good because I look after myself yeah, yeah. and try to stay healthy. I'm, I'm never touched any truck in my whole life. I don't really drink a lot. So my writer is always for my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I would, I think I will make music forever. If I would love to be still on stage, but that's still 10 years from now. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. I one wish and I have for sure would be be more producer in the background, having maybe producing different talents for yeah. different styles. Almost make like 360 deals with with great talent, yeah. because with my experience, I could be also a great manager. Yeah. Um, because I manage, I manage my whole career myself. Mm -hmm. you know, so, um, yeah, there's a lot of options for me. Yeah. Maybe and movie scores. Movie scores could be a big thing for me, but it also would require maybe to move to LA. You really have to be there when you want to work on the big, big, big stuff. Uh, maybe working with Hans could be one option. Yeah. One, this could be sooner or later. We still have our mutual friend Moya Brennan. Oh yeah. She always, she always told me she could always do it in production if I feel ready. But she said, if you are ready and he, you would get the meeting and he wants you to jump on board, then you have to do it. Yeah. That, but that would mean that's full time. That means I would need to quit all my trans world and everything. And I still love doing this, yeah. right? So that's why I feel... You're not ready yet. That's not ready yet. I think that's the best thing. Still, it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. maybe we should do another interview in 10 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll have to fly to LA. I don't um, know. Fingers crossed in 10 years, I would still look like that, yeah, right? Exactly. Would be actually. Let's see how that actually, when we met last time, remember, we looked, you, you, you put, put yeah, out yeah. a few of my pictures like from 10, 15 years yeah, ago, yeah. and we realized I look yeah. way better yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to edit them in the interview. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thanks always for your time. Yeah, for welcome, it's always great to see you. Thanks, man. Yeah. All right, that was it. This week's vlog, the story behind Lost by Sun Lounger, my interview with Roger Shah. Roger, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And I also did another interview with Roger. In that one we spoke about the Sun Lounger track White Sand. That interview is available on my channel already so make sure to check it out. Once again thanks for watching and until next time bye bye.